Hello everyone. So welcome back in this video. So today uh, I'm going to talk about a very fundamental mathematical concept which we just take for granted in physics. Uh, and we use it as if it's a, you know, it's a fundamental uh, rule of physics, uh, sorry, of mathematics, like 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, right? So this is some rules we have established in mathematics, right? Addition, subtraction, multiplication. So in that way we use. Uh, so yeah, I would want to go deep there. So before that, let me just ask you a question. So I mean, we have now covered a bunch of topics, right? So have you wondered, uh, I mean, if a body uh, moves in a circular path, right? And if it's angular, so if, so let's say uh, there is a, there's a body. So this is, a, let's say, so, so let's say this is a body and it moves in a circular path. And let's say about this center, about this uh, axis or center. And let's say the angular velocity of the body is uh, omega then and let's say the radius of the motion is r and we s we i mean uh, we we know that right that and if let's say the omega is constant then the velocity of the uh, or the speed of the uh, this object will be what v is equal to r omega right we know that and uh, we also know that you know if uh, there is a if i mean if so if you have an angle d theta and if there is a radius and if there is an arc then the length of this arc is r d theta so, so essentially using this only we have derived this right and i mean this we know this we have used quite often so my now in this video i want to go here i mean i want to go deep here and i want to understand i mean i want to uh, you know explain why why this uh, i mean this arc is r d theta right why not uh, why not uh, r by d theta or why not you know anything else why why is it only r d theta and not r by d theta right so the i mean the it's very simple right it's very simple and when i will walk you through the uh, through the analysis you will find that yeah it's quite simple but at times i have seen a lot of people you know just blindly use it without knowing why is it r r d theta so it's important to you know take a sometimes take a detour and do a fa do i mean do a check at uh, whatever things we are using, what are the fundamental, uh, I mean, basis of, of of using them? Yeah. So let me get to the point, and let me just try to spend some time briefly on it, and let's try to understand why this is R D theta. So, so let's take a uh, let's take a, let's take a circle, right? So let's take uh, this as a circle. Let's take a, let's let us draw a circle. It's not a perfect circle, but let's say this is a circle. And let's say uh, this is a the radius, and this is r. Now, as we traverse ar along the circumference of the circle, we will have different arcs, right? So, if we go from here to here, so we will have an arc from here to here, and that arc will subtend an angle, you know, here, right? So, and we know that this, so um, as we can see, if we, let's say, if we take, if we take a 90 degree, right, if let's say this arc subtends an angle of 90 degree, we can easily see this thing, right, that this arc is not straight, right, there's a, there's a curve, it's a curve, right, it's a part of circle, and we can see that. However, if we start reducing the length of the arc, then what will happen, the angle which the arc will subtend will also reduce, right, and the, as you can see, the curviness in this arc, also reduces is also less than the curviness of the previous arc right we can see this right this arc was more curved this i mean this is curved but this is less curved right if we further reduce the uh, the length of the arc further the angle will be reduced and the curviness further reduces and if we keep on doing this doing this doing this till we reach a point where where we choose an arc let's say this arc such that the angle which this arc subtends on the center is very small right when i say very small it's like i think for very small things we use d theta right so assume that it's kind of nearing zero let's assume that it's this d theta is actually nearing zero so essentially it's about zero angle right when we take when we assume that when we take that arc which subtends an angle of d theta which tends to zero then we can very easily assume that this arc actually will be a straight line Right. So this arc will be like a straight line, we can assume. 
though there will be some deviation but even it's so small that we can fairly with good amount of confidence assume that this arc will be a straight line right and we can also assume that this since this arc is a straight line then from this uh, from the from this radius this arc will make an angle of 90 degree right we can assume that then what we do we simply apply our normal trigonometry because trigonometry is one of the fundamental uh, I would say rule of mathematics just like you have 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 same way sine theta is uh, you know sine sine theta or tan theta is equal to uh, sine theta by cos theta right so this is also fundamental rule is equal to uh, uh, perpendicular by base right so this is also a fundamental rule of mathematics right so this cannot be wrong so here there here i mean that's how mathematics has been designed so if you question this then essentially we are questioning the fundamental assumptions of mathematics so there are few assumptions on that we have built mathematics and then we do modeling of our uh, uh, surroundings and natural phenomena which actually has helped in evolving the subject of physics right so so let's let's come back here so let's say in this triangle uh, we, as we discussed this arc is, can be considered to be a straight line and given this arc is so small we can also assume that we can, we can uh, not assume we can see that you know this is so small this angle is actually tending to zero so this angle is i mean this this angle between this arc and this radius is actually equal to 90 degree right so let's say let me call it o a b now in this triangle o a b let's let's say this is a d theta right now let's apply tan let's apply the tan function right so what will be the tan of d theta tan of d theta so that will be what sine d theta by cos d theta cos d theta now we know that if this d theta uh, kind of approaches zero then cos d theta i mean it's similar to it will be very near it will be actually equal to cos zero cos 0 sorry 0 and what is cos 0 cos 0 is nothing but 1 right so when this angle is very small so tan d theta will be equal to sin d theta right and what is uh, uh, what is uh, you know what is what is sin d theta here sin d theta will be what it will be perpendicular which is this length of the arc divided by the hypotenuse right so this hypotenuse oa and what is oa again since we have assumed that this is a circle so again we can assume that ob is equal to oa now in a regular triangle if you have a triangle like this no way uh, if two sides are uh, i mean uh, as in if there's a 90 degree angle if you take a right angle triangle uh, in a right angle triangle i mean you can't get you can't have a situation in which two sides are equal but given that if this this angle is very small and if we assume that you know if the angle is very small then we'll have a right angle triangle something like this right something like this so there again we can assume that hey this uh, ob is equal to oa right this ob is equal to oa right so if we assume that then uh, uh, this ab so uh, so so let, let's let's call this ab so let's call this as sorry let's not call it as r because r is the radius let's call it as ab by OA and OA can be uh, can be called as R right and uh, again this is again a rule of mathematics that when this uh, as in like cos theta we know that when theta approaches 0 so cos 0 will be equal to 1 for sine theta if theta is very small I'm actually I mean nearing 0 so let's say it's if theta approaches zero, then sine theta is what zero, right? So if theta is uh, like if theta approaches zero, then sine theta will be what zero because sine of zero is zero. So this tells us that when theta is very small, then sine theta becomes actually equal to the theta value. Again, it's for very small, and what is the intuition that if th when theta becomes zero, sine zero is zero, right? So again, let's use that intuition. So when theta becomes very small, this sine theta will become theta. Just just this angle, just this angle. So it will become just d theta, and d theta will be what a b by r. 
so ab will be what ab will be r d theta right so essentially what we have done is we have applied trigonometry but when we have plugged the values so again when we apply trigonometry i mean when we apply trigonometry here we use the basic standard formula of trigonometry but then when we started applying the values there we started making assumptions and that we can do right because see we don't have to find the perfect uh, model of everything like for physics uh, you know we do a lot of modeling right newton's laws all these laws are there which help us model the natural phenomena now these models should be good enough for a practical purpose right as in it should solve our practical utility and using that we can you know apply them and and lot of engineering fields are there where we apply those physics those physics uh, those uh, you know the, i mean the models which we have developed and we we kind of see lot of engineering transformation so for example if you take an automobile right in automobile uh, what do you have you have an engine and in the engine the crank there, i mean you have a crank sh uh, you you have a sh shaft right you have a piston shaft and you have a crank shaft right so I mean, what i'm trying to say is that when that the, the way the engine engine operates essentially the underlying principle are the uh, are the ones which we have which we know like rotational motion newton's laws of motion linear motion right so in that how have we how i mean how have we how have we modeled those we have modeled those using mathematics and when we have modeled those using mathematics our, i mean our model need not be extremely perfect right our mo our model should be good enough that it can um, it can it, like it can help us achieve the practical utility right so that's the objective so here also i mean essentially we have made this assumption so this assumption is good enough to you know uh, help us apply these concept this model in the real world phenomena and when we apply them we kind of see that yes this model the, the whatever this model predicts that kind of very is very i would say accurately correlates with what we observe right so the error is 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 not big so when the error is manageable it's fine right so let's why complicate this thing when we can uh, i mean why complicate the model right so from that perspective this assumption which we have made it works it works and that's why you know we use this in this sort of situation this length of the arc we use as r d theta and and so and so you know this v is equal to r omega right so this has been derived from this only so if a, if a body moves in an angular velocity then this arc will be what this arc length of the arc will be r d theta and when you differentiate so what will be the angular velocity uh, i mean what will be the velocity of this body the velocity of to find the velocity of the body you will have to uh, you know differentiate this arc I mean, with respect to time, right? So if you differentiate that, you will have r d theta by dt, and d theta by dt is what will be omega. So you will get v is equal to r omega, right? So and so many other applications we know, right? Like a lot of calculus we use in physics, right? So underlying underlying uh, uh, I would say principle is this only that the length of an arc is equal to r d theta, right? So the, so it's very obvious, but yeah, I thought that it would be good to clarify it. so that you know we have more confidence in uh, uh, in uh, in learning what we are doing right so thank you